And I will give them one heart, and I will put a new spirit within you. And I will take the stony heart out of their flesh, and will give them a heart of flesh, that they may walk in my statutes, and keep mine ordinances, and do them. And they shall be my people, and I will be their God. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them, that I will not turn away from them to do them good, but I will put my fear in their hearts, that they shall not depart from me. Ezekiel and Jeremiah are common reference places for once saved, always saved believers to go to when trying to prove a lie. They want to deceive those who are unaware into thinking that these verses are speaking to Gentiles now, when in fact it is speaking to Israel later, that is, in New Jerusalem. Let's take a look at who the Lord is actually speaking to here in Ezekiel and in Jeremiah. Ezekiel chapter 36, starting in verse 1. Prophesy unto the mountains of Israel. Verse 4, mountains of Israel. Verse 6, land of Israel. Verse 8, mountains of Israel. Verse 10, house of Israel. Verse 12, my people Israel. Verse 17, house of Israel. Verse 21, house of Israel. Verse 22, house of Israel. Verse 32, house of Israel. What most once saved always saved believers don't realize and what many don't want you to know is that chapter 36 is speaking to Israel and the context really begins in chapter 34. And the word of the Lord came unto me saying, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me saying, Also thou son of man, prophesy unto the mountains of Israel. From chapters 34 to 36, the Lord is sending the prophet Ezekiel to prophesy against Israel. This has nothing to do with Gentiles. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which covenant they break, although I was an husband unto them, saith the Lord. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts, and write it in their hearts, and will be their God, and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor, and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. Question. Do we all know the Lord? Is it not necessary for us to teach every man his neighbor because all know the Lord? Look back in verse 31. Who is this speaking to? The house of Israel and the house of Judah. Further confirmation of who this is referring to is found in the book of Hebrews chapter 8 beginning in verse 8. For finding fault with them he saith, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor, and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me, from the least to the greatest. For I will be merciful unto their unrighteousness, and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. It is easy for men to receive a false doctrine like eternal security, because it allows them to continue doing what they want here and there, thinking that they have it made. Here is the problem. If you believe in once saved, always saved, you believe a lie, and you are putting your trust in men. Jeremiah 17.5 says, Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from the Lord. Here is the solution. Stop putting your trust in men, and trust the Lord. Jeremiah 17.7 Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, and whose hope the Lord is.